Hey folks, Mac T here. We got us a 2011 Ford Exploder that has probably seen better days. Eh, about 200,000 miles on this bad boy, but uh, neither here nor there. Uh, she's looking a little bit rough for the days. Yep, had, had her fair share of rodeos, but uh, still runs, well, ran is probably the better choice of the words. Uh, it did used to run, uh, but it had a catastrophic failure. It's a 3.5 Duratec engine, 2011, built in 2010. So it's a very early model Lima 3.5 Duratec. And uh, it, it grenaded itself. I've never seen this happen before, but uh, in the process of uh, dying, uh, the young lady was driving it down the road, and all of a sudden it started losing power until it just did not run. And, of course, we have the water pump failure. We all know water pump failures. Yeah, they're really pretty good. But she burned the teeth right off of it when it failed. Holy cow. And then check this out. Look at that. Broke the casing. Put it at an angle. And we got more damage over here. It started eating into the casing right there. And yes, you can see where it ate it up and it busted it. Then the impeller busted off. And believe it or not, Jeff did find all the bits and pieces to go with it. But it started eating up the seals and everything else going with it. And this thing grenaded itself. It was leaking not only into the oil pan, but it was leaking outside of the engine also. Then when it failed and that chain uh, was uh, you know destroyed in the process, Jeff took the engine apart and he noticed something missing. What do you guys see missing here? Yeah, what about those cam phaser chains? Yeah, well think about that. The cam phaser chains chain was missing. And then we started having more problems. Look at the chain. Cam phaser chain was laying in the oil pan. Now we all know that these Duratec engines, the 3.5 and the 3.7, are what they call interference engines. This cam stopped moving. The pistons were still going like this, flap, flap, flap. So do you think in the process of the pistons still going up and down, uh, that the valves were saying, hello, pistons, and thus causing bent valves. We don't know. We're not going to tear it apart because what we're going to do is we just wrote this thing off, basically, because uh, Jeff did ask my opinion. I said, interference, cam, cams, yeah, you're going to have to tear the head off just to have everything measured, uh, and we don't know where we're at. And then Mano in the group, he... He was asked, and he says, yep, interference engine, got to tear the head off. And then Jeff called in a good buddy of his. It's a Ford mechanic that's worked on these many, many years. And he, old Nick, he, uh, he said, eh, sorry, Jeff. Three votes against Jeff. So Jeff says, okay, if you guys are going to be that way, we'll just go ahead and order a remand to 3.5. And then we'll just pull this out of the uh, out of the old exploder. So he's busy disconnecting all this stuff. You got to get the intake uh, manifolds out, the fuel rails. There's a lot of stuff. Then we're going to draw the engine out along with the transmission. Got to take the battery out, disconnect all that. Then we'll just winch this bad boy out of here. Got to get the hood off too, right? But uh, winch it all out of here, and then. Uh, separate it mount it back up onto the old transmission and carry this old girl probably a few more years uh so uh young lady don't you know she's still trying to pay for this thing and uh thus this is an expense that is uh going to add on to her monthly payment so not a good thing single mom trying to make things ends meet and uh then this happens we all heard this story before so it's never good but Jeff's going to help her. I'm trying to help, but Jeff's not letting me help for some reason. 
but uh, I look forward to when he tells me he has the engine to come here and maybe hand him tools or something. Maybe we can get some extra help to do all this, but I definitely want to be a part of it. But yeah, this engine, first water pump I've ever seen fail that grenaded an engine. And on top of it, uh, you know, I've just never seen a failure like this in, in a Duratec. So this is a first for us. I'm sure there's somebody you can put in the comments that says, oh yeah, I've seen this. But we're talking where it actually destroyed the cam phaser chain and caused damage in that nature. So, uh, you know, it happened suddenly. She pulled off the side of the road immediately. Uh, we don't know. We don't know what happened in it. But as you can see, look at that. It's not like she did not take care of it. Now, Jeff's going to try to prove me wrong here and try to show me uh, that there are no telltale signs of... Uh, Piston now that circle contact. that circles on every piston. That's just yeah. part of the casting. But there, I. But he's trying to get around there. But I don't know that we can see everything in, in its entirety. But uh, that was pretty clean. Pretty clean. Yep. I don't see any dimples or dents or strike marks. Not seeing a whole lot going on in there, but it doesn't take much contact of a no. piston to a valve. To make a valve not want to seat well and then an engine don't run good so if you're all thinking that okay just right we're all wrong just keep in mind it, just a millimeter of difference can cause a cause a valve not to seat and that's definitely not what you want there's something there but, rust there's start some rust forming yeah, on the edges so but you know what we want this engine to run we want it to run good for this young lady so the best thing we can do is to replace it. It'll give her more miles. This this old gal probably got a <laughs> got a few more miles left in her. She got a little bit of rusty rusties, but uh, yeah, we got the struts off. Holy cow! Look at these struts. These struts got two hundred thousand miles on them, folks. Check that bad boy out. Does that even go down, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. It came you can, back you can, out. You can move it. Yeah, but yeah, does it pop out or is it just sort of inch out? It's sluggish. Sluggish, yeah. so. Anyway, new struts for the front is probably what's going to happen on it. But, uh, yeah, lots of lots of bits and pieces here that uh, have been taken off. And this is the engine. Okay, what was it, Jeff? Oh, January, February, March, April 11th of 2010, folks. This is a very early TIVCT engine. A very early model. One thing Jeff did tell me, you see this here, folks, with a chain? Yeah, these early 2010 TIVCT engines, you can get the timing chain off of this side by just undoing it and pulling it between the phasers. And then on this side, right down here, you can't do that. There is not enough room. And this is only the case for the early TIVCT engines that were built in the 2010 area. The 2011s, you can get the chains wiggled out between the cam phasers, but the 2010s, you cannot, back on this bank right here, the first bank, you cannot get that chain, that timing chain off of there. So, uh, yeah, something a little tidbit easy to learn because, uh, we tried to get it off, and the only way you're going to do it is by removing the cam phasers. So, yeah. But on Lulu Bell, when we did hers, we could pull the timing chain off of both cam phasers. And that was a January 2011 build. So, I know for a fact in 2011 you can do it. But on a 2010 build, you can't. you got to remove the cam phasers over there on bank 2, or bank 1 rather. So, uh, just keep that in mind. But, overall... I'll try to keep you up to date about what's going on. I'll post some pictures at the end credits here of you can of you guys seeing more of these bits and pieces. And we're probably going to take the front end to take the engine out. We're going to break down the front end of this thing and uh, do it. So it's a long-term project. The engine will probably get here in about a month of Sundays. Who knows? Two days. Two more days it'll be here. So next time you see me being able to take a picture of this, who knows? It'll probably have a new engine in it. Because I'll be working and 
making a living doing what I generally do. Anyway, folks, uh, stand by for some of the photos of uh, the shots that Jeff sent me and listen to some music. Band of One is Mac T Ford Edge. And uh, remember, Mac T Garage. Like, subscribe, join on our Facebook group. And also, uh, my feet hit the floor today. I'm having a great day. And I want you to have a great day, too. Mercy Girl's got a couple of one liners for you. And uh, see you all next time. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos. And remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Girl production. <laughs>